Zambia, one nation. Good evening and thank you for joining us for tonight's news broadcast. Here are the headlines. Concola Copper Mines says three out of the 300 people that were affected by sulfur dioxide emissions in Chingola last week are still admitted to hospital. The Zambia Police Service has launched a special operation aimed at curbing escalating criminal activities in Kitwe. Energy Minister Matthew Nkoa says power import from ESCOM of South Africa will start before the end of the week. And Zambia national football team interim coach Agrech Yangi says the inclusion of Pat Sandaka and Enoch Mwepo will strengthen the team. Thank you for joining us for tonight's main news broadcast. To present it, I'm Mary Kasoka Mwikisa. Let's now have a look at the headlines. The details, rather. Concola Copper Mines KCM says three out of the 300 people that were affected by South dioxide emissions in Chingola last week are still admitted to hospital. KCM Chief Executive Officer Christopher Shepard says all the 297 people were treated and released from the two hospitals in Changa North and South Hospital after inhaling the emissions. Mr. Shepard, who was speaking when Mines Minister Richard Musoka called on him, said KCM has shut down the acid plant and launched a full-scale investigation into the matter. Here's a report. This is where the sulfur dioxide, which affected 306 people in Chingola last week, was discharged. The Nchanga acid plant, which is operated by Concola Copper Mines, KCM, caused pollution on Thursday last week. As a result, a number of KCM employees and pupils from the nearby Nchanga Trust School were admitted in hospital. 306 people had to be looked after. We actually had to make use of our Chili Lobombi hospital as well, up, up north. Um, and it was smoothly executed. And I'm pleased to say that at this stage, no one has um, suffered any lasting harm. Uh, as of this morning, there were three children that had been readmitted for observation. Mines Minister Richard Musukwa is not happy with the situation. KCM must face the provisions of the law. And our colleagues at Zema must work together to ensure that this unbecoming uh, 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 attitude where uh, mining houses uh, can at will pollute our water, pollute our environment, without any serious uh, um, uh, punitive action from uh, entities uh, such as Mine Safety and Zema, who are charged to ensuring that, uh, uh, you know, mine houses uh, uh, maintain the acceptable discharge in the environment. The minister was today on a fact-finding mission. He toured the Nchanga acid plant in the company of various civic leaders and KCM officials. To explain how it can happen in such a way that the township here, the hospital next is not affected, then the school gets affected. Later, he visited Nchanga Trust School and interacted with pupils and at Nchanga South Hospital. The minister thanked health workers who attended to the 306 people who were affected. Posharala, ZNBC News in Chingola. An international delegation from the African Union is in Solwezi, northwestern province, to conduct a target review in the mining sector. APRM Target Review Coordinator Janet Mabwa says the review will analyze social and economic factors that are affecting the mining sector and a report will be presented to Cabinet on December 15 this year. Here's a report. It's the major contributor to the country's revenue. The mining sector alone accounts for more than 60% of the country's foreign exchange. No wonder 
government wants to reap more benefits and realize full potential of the sector through sustainable mineral resource management. For this reason, a team from the African Union under the Africa Peer Review Mechanism is in Solwezi, northwestern province, to conduct a review of the mining sector. The purpose is to help government realize full potential from the mining sector and attain resource management. I'm going to visit mines here to, um, to further understand uh, the complexity and um, offer solutions uh, to the Zambian government uh, to um, help the Zambian uh, government address some of the concerns raised by the population and uh, improve the welfare. And government is happy to receive the delegation. Uh, to come up with uh, some guidance on the prudence management of uh, mining sector and tourism in uh, Zambia. The delegation later proceeded to Kansanshi Mine where management briefed them on their operations. Our banks saved one million US dollars. Not quite sure, US dollars. So what that's done is it's, it's put a, an extra million US dollars into our community that wasn't there previously. It's created little micro-economies all over the place. And Chief Kabijin Panga is happy with the relations with Kansashi Mine. If we talk of the budget of nine, uh, 2014, they allocated about four, $14 million uh, to the Chief Dome from the co uh, corporate social responsibility. The African Review Mechanism is tomorrow expected to visit Kalumbila District where they will meet management at Kalumbila Mine. Lupindula Mwewa, ZNBC News, Solwezi. Now, the Zambia Police Service has launched a special operation aimed at curbing the escalating criminal activities in Kitwe. Deputy Inspector of Police in charge of operations, De De Boni Capeso, is leading a team of special forces that are set camp in Kitwe since last night. We have a report. He's in the city to get to the bottom of the escalating crime wave that has hit the city. And his first call was with the media where the district commissioner, Bino Mpondo, was in attendance. So, sir, I want to sincerely thank you for coming to Kitwe to reassure our people, my people, who have for a long time been crying in anguish that we are not protecting them because of uh, the high levels of incidents. Boni Peso wants to work with the media. Please, always treat these people as your partners. Tell your officers in charge in fact, if there is a meeting, if there is a rally, if there is an operation, members of, the, members of the public must report to the police, to the officer in charge, that, sir, we are ready, we are ready to go with you. So that the press, the police officers are even able to protect members of the press who are attending in such an operation or such a rally. And responding to journalists, the deputy IG categorically considered that the police were understaffed besides having a few other problems. Million people in Zambia compared to about, probably by now, we should be about 18,000 police officers. And within those 18,000 police officers, others have retired, others have died, others are still there, but they are sick, incapable to work, they are in hospitals, and that has already taken away from our statistical figure of 18,000 people as police officers, compared to 17 million people. And it's, up, it's now up to us to make an initiative to say where crime levels are rising, we also take a deliberate step to go and reinforce such communities. His visit will last seven days. Umundira Chilinda, ZNBC News in Kitwe. Now, Energy Minister Matthew Nkua says power imports from ESCOM of South Africa will start before the end of the week. Ms. Nkua says the 300 megawatts is anticipated to reduce about two hours of load shedding. We have a report. After a long wait, the national power lines will finally receive some extra dose of electricity. Importation of 300 megawatts of power from ESCOM of South Africa will start flowing through the power lines before the end of the week. Energy Minister Matthew Nkua says the development will ease load management pressure 
the country has been experiencing. I can only look at maybe two hours. In view of the fact that by the time we we're talking of that power importation, we are at about six to seven hundred. Now we are almost nine hundred shortage. So even if we bring that uh, three hundred megawatts, we will we'll come back to about uh, a shortage of six hundred megawatts, which which uh, was at about uh, eight eight hours or so. Mr. Nkua also hinted on the debt owed by Zesco to Mamba Collieries Limited. We're talking about a 20 million US dollars, and that 20 million US dollars, uh, I was being told again when I was being briefed that uh, part of it, about 10 million, should be given to them uh, this uh, to, today or so. So hopefully, but hopefully that that will be paid to them, and then we'll pay them the other 10 million. But that is not the reason why the plant is down. The plant is just genuinely got a problem. It's, it's the, the tubes for the, for the boilers which are, are damaged, they were leaking. Meanwhile, Mr. Nkua toured Lusaka so Fuel Depot to check on operations after the protest by truck drivers last week. For the situation is no more people shouldn't be alarmed. And uh, I must say that I'm grateful to, to the drivers of these trucks who, who have uh, shown respect to the government by heeding so that whatever grievances they have we can sit down and discuss with them. Lusaka Fuel Depot Acting Superintendent Moses Chipulu said operations are back to normal. As you have seen outside we are safe and uh, things are back to normal. Uh, you've seen yourself trucks are loading and they are going to the OMCs. Kachapamwinga, ZNBC News, Lusaka. Now, government says it will remove trade unions that do not represent the mandate of the people from the labor market. Labor Permanent Secretary Chanda Kazia says it is unfortunate that some trade unions go on strike without following the right procedures. He said this at a media briefing in Lusaka today. I'm also aware that there are certain associations that have no mandate under the Industrial Labor Relations Act to participate in the employee-employee relationship. They've also taken swipe at the drivers, pretending that they are um, dealing with the interests of drivers. Now we have to understand that associations, if they are registered under the Registrar of Societies, the Companies Act, Operatives Act, are excluded by the operation of the Industrial Labor Relations Act to take part. But if they want to formalize themselves, they can still come to the Ministry of Labor, register themselves. So they're guided, they have their constitution, they have their executive, we're able to know the source of financing that they're having, and then you know, they can participate. The Ministry of Agriculture will next week hold a meeting with the Ministry of Finance to come up with a clear roadmap on how to dismantle debt owed to agro-dealers across the country. Ministry of Agriculture Permanent Secretary Songo Wayo Ziambo says so far government has paid over 810 million kwacha to agro-dealers across the country out of the 1.2 billion kwacha owed to them. The Permanent Secretary said this in Lusaka when he addressed agro-dealers who were protesting over the delayed payments. These things. We owed agro dealers about 1.2 billion kwacha and uh, government has done very well because so far uh, government has paid out 810 million kwacha uh, which has left a balance of 390 million kwacha. So it is the 390 million kwacha uh, which they are concerned about and they want to know when exactly they are going to be paid. We consider agro-dealers to be very important in the value chain, especially in the districts where we are using the e uh, system to supply fertilizers to the farmers. Because this fertilizer is supplied through the same agro-dealers, who in most cases are even closer to the farmer. In other news, the Civil Service Commission Vice Chairperson Hilary Chipango says piloting delegated functions to provincial centers and some line ministries to manage human resource cases will enhance efficiency. The Civil Service Commission Vice Chairperson is leading a team of commissioners and senior officials from Public Service Management Division PSMD in Southern Province to induct members of the Human Resource Management Committee who will later be sworn in to perform various delegated 
delegated functions of the Civil Service Commission. Here is a report. The Civil Service Commission has remained committed to actualizing the decentralization process of some of its functions to provinces and ministries, and Southern Province has become the latest to benefit from this devolution program. Human resource management reforms, ladies and gentlemen, are aimed at improving efficiency and effectiveness in the processing of human resource cases in ministries, provinces, and other spending agencies. And to be very specific, we've delegated functions to do with confirmations, as well as transfers within the district. The Commission wants this committee to conform to the required standard, failure to which the delegated functions shall be withdrawn. Avoid tribalism, avoid nepotism, avoid favoritism, avoid partisan politics. The provincial administration in Choma has pledged to support the decentralized functions of the Civil Service Commission. Mine is just to thank you for identifying the southern province and also having the confidence that the provincial administration will be able to discharge some of your functions. The transfer of power to manage human resources from the center to ministries and provinces will contribute to a well-motivated civil service which is key in driving national development. In Chimunya Nalumpa, Zanis, in Choma, Thank you for staying with us on ZNBC's main news broadcast this evening. And right now we take our first commercial break. I'll be right back with more stories to stay tuned. National Development Planning Permanent Secretary Dennis Chisenda says quality statistics are key in the formulation of policies. Speaking during the launch of the 2019 African Statistics Week, Mr. Chisenda said the data collected is also used in formulating policies that protect the rights of people seeking refuge in other countries. During the same event, Mr. Chisenda also availed the logo for the Zambia Statistics Agency, formerly known as the Central Statistical Office. Meanwhile, Interim Statistician General Molenga Musepa said the formulation of the Zambia Statistics Agency will help government collect data in time. The Green Climate Fund, GCF, has agreed in principle to provide an additional 75 million U.S. dollars to combat climate change in Zambia. Ministry of National Development Planning Permanent Secretary Chola Chabala disclosed this when he called on Zambia's ambassador to South Korea, Wilbur Samosa. 
Mr. Chabala says the funding will go towards implementing climate change adaptation and mitigation programs in Zambia. And Mr. Samosa expressed optimism that Zambia stands to benefit more from the Green Climate Fund resources, which every country is thriving to have access. He said Zambia is ranked highly in Africa, only second to Egypt in resource accessibility and quality of proposals sub submitted to the GCF. This is according to a statement released to ZMBC News by Ministry of National Development Planning spokesperson Chibaula Silwamba. Now, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Comesa Secretary General Chileshe Kapwepwe, says digitizing trade facilitation instruments is estimated to create new trade worth 12.3 billion US dollars annually. Ms. Kapwepwe says technical work on launching a digital certificate of origin and regional trade portal is now completed. She was speaking during a media briefing in Lusaka on Comesa 25th anniversary and the 40th policy organs meeting in Lusaka today. Every celebration must have a purpose. For us in Comesa, we are celebrating the positive impacts that our programs have had on the lives of the people in our region since the organization was established. One of our main achievements in comparison with other economic communities is the increase in geographical size. Comesa constitutes a third of Africa and has consistently been attracting new membership. Over the years, it has outgrown the Eastern and Southern Africa region and now covers a large part of Northern and Central Africa as well. Going forward would be to really to, to support intra commerce trade, to grow the trade uh, amongst our member states. And one of the major uh, objectives to do that is trade facilitation. We take our second break and coming up after that, we have some foreign and sports news to stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching ZNBC News. Now, the Road Development Agency, RDA, has embarked on improving the conditions of bridges and road infrastructure across the country. RDA Director and Chief Executive Officer Engineer Elias Mwape disclosed that the agency will partner with the American corporation ACRO in implementing some of the projects which will improve the transport network in the country. He was speaking during a training workshop for the local contractors by ACRO Corporation in Lusaka. Meanwhile, ACRO President for International Business Bridges USA, Paul Sullivan, has committed to share knowledge with local engineers so as to see quality in the bridges being installed across the country. The government of the Republic of Zambia through the Road Development Agency is implementing various programs and projects. Among them is the Acro Bridge Project, which will see some bridges in poor condition being replaced and the new ones being built. The rural connectivity project, which will see the replacement and construction of new culverts. Routine maintenance of bridges, which will see the repair of some bridges in all the provinces. And various bridge repair projects, which are ongoing in various provinces. Zambia's defense and security institutions have continued to engage with their neighbors on peace and security issues through the Joint Permanent Commissions. The 14th session of the Malawi-Zambia Joint Permanent Commission on Defense and Security is underway in Blantyre, Malawi. Here's a report. The 14th session of the Malawi-Zambia Joint Permanent Commission on Defense and Security, JPC, Officials meeting has opened in Blantyre, Malawi. Secretary in the Ministry of Defense Malawi, Bright Kumwembe, who is also chairperson of the 14th session, says JPC presents an opportunity for the two countries to renew commitment towards the enhancement of friendly relations between Malawi and Zambia while keeping the two nations safe. As we all know, Malawi and Zambia continue to enjoy cordial relations socially, economically, and politically. These relations have helped to uplift the living standards among the citizens of both countries. And speaking at the same function, Zambia's permanent secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs, Dr. Chile Shemlenga, 
acknowledge the historic relations which dates back to the liberation struggle. I also wish to acknowledge the historical relationship between Zambia and Malawi, which dates back to the liberation struggles for the Southern African region. You agree with me that these relations have mainly been due to, to the efforts of our defense and security personnel to ensure peace and stability along the common border and in the two countries. JPC is a platform that annually brings defense and security sector personnel of Zambia and her neighbors to discuss matters of mutual interest. Jacqueline Staley reporting for Zanis from Blantyre, Malawi. In foreign news, British lawmaker Peter Hayne says several international banks enabled corruption in South Africa under former President Jacob Zuma. The BBC reports that at an inquiry hearing, Lord Hayne said HSBC, Standard Chartered and India's Bank of Baroda were directly culpable. The inquiry is investigating claims of graft against Mr. Zuma and the Gupta family. They deny any wrongdoing. HSBC said it supported the inquiry while Standard Chartered said there was no evidence linking it to the Guptas. No one from the Bank of Baroda was immediately available for a comment. Speaking in Johannesburg, Lord Hain alleged that the banks were helping the Guptas to hide the source of their illicit gains through a network of banks' accounts and shell companies. While you're watching the news on ZNBC TV, we take our third and final break. We'll be right back on the other side. Another segment in detail. Now, the Zambia national football team interim coach Agri Chiangi says the inclusion of Pat Sandaka and Enoch Moipo will strengthen the team in tomorrow's Group H 2021 Afghan qualifier against Zimbabwe. Speaking during the pre-match media conference held at Football House, Chiangi said the technical bench has worked on the glitches experienced in the 5 nil thrashing at the hands of Algeria last week. And Zimbabwe coach Joey Antbas said the team heads into the game with a calculated approach because Zambia is wounded following their defeat to Algeria in the first game. Meanwhile, Chipolo Polo captain Kabaso Chongo said the team will work together to beat Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe captain Alex Modimo said players want to win against Zambia so that they can get back into the race. Back and the, the times that we've had training sessions, everyone looks very, very positive. And we believe by the, the time we finish our session today, this afternoon, everyone will be, be ready to play tomorrow. The game has got its own pressures. Uh, the only thing is that uh, we just have to know how to handle the pressure. Because if you don't handle pressure, then the uh, pressure will swallow you. And that is what we don't want. We know that there will be a lot of pressure, especially from the fans. Whenever Zambia and Zambia play, uh, it's always a uh, closely contested affair. So, what we know is that we come here for a battle. It will not be easy at all. Meanwhile, ZNBC will tomorrow televise the Zambia Zimbabwe match. ZNBC Corporate Affairs Manager Yvette Chanda says the game will be televised on ZNBC TV One at 18 hours. Mrs. Chanda confirmed this to ZNBC News this afternoon. Now, Exodus Boxing Academy boxer Simon Goma says he is ready to bring the World Boxing Lightweight Intercontinental Championship title when he takes on Sadiq Momba of Tanzania. Goma, who recently turned professional, has been in camp since last week and is confident of victory. Wilson Melinda reports. He showcases his skill as he prepares for his next fight against a Tanzanian boxer. Simon Ngoma, also known as the Hitman, Tiolambambo, is a Zambian boxer with a record of six wins and one loss. Under the tutelage of veteran boxing coach Anthony Mwamba of Exodus Table, Simon is aiming to become Zambia's next intercontinental champion when he takes on Tanzanian boxer Sadiki Momba in the vacant WBF lightweight intercontinental championship. Ngoma delves into his boxing career, which started at the age of 16. I started boxing in... 2010. As an amateur bo boxer, I started boxing in 2010. And right now, I'm a professional and I'll be fighting for a w WBF Intercontinental title fight. 
Yeah. I joined Exodus Box in Academy in 2012. When I focus in boxing, I was a With final techniques and physical fitness put in place, Ngoma has also promised fans a good fight. Dream come true. I, I was dreaming to be a champion and it, it, it's now my time to be a champion. We have a new punch called Matanza Punch and I'm going to show that opponent of Tanzania how Matanza Punch is. Ngoma will be hoping to make it seven wins from eight fights. Wilson Mulinda, ZNBC News, Lusaka. William Sichone from Matero Gym is the new Mr. Lusaka 2019 bodybuilding champion, taking over from Sylvester Mwila. Sichone over the weekend walked away with 10,000 kwacha prize money, beating Clement Shamboko from Universal Gym into second place. Here's a report. After months of intense training in the gym to achieve peak contest muscularity, it was time to showcase the bodies and impress the judges. One after the other, they walked forward and in different body twists, they displayed their muscle density. 23 bodybuilders divided in three categories competed for the top three positions. Finally, taking over the throne was William Sichone from Matero Gym. My, my target is to dethrone Mr. Zambia on the 14th of December. That's my aim. The second runner-up came from Universal Gym and walked away with 5,000 kwacha. I'll be better for Mr. Zambia. That, that I can promise, yeah. Bodybuilding Association President Cornelius Chanda has described the event as successful and is looking forward to more women participation. For us to introduce in women uh, category, women's physique, you saw it, men's physique, it was uh, something colorful, it was something successful, something amazing. Lilai Ward for Councillor Muhammad Mutete represented the guest of honor, Lusaka Mayor Mao Sampa. His Excellence has already demonstrated we need to live in a society, in a community where each and everyone is physically fit. Bodybuilding fans will now be looking forward to Mr. Zambia slated for December 14. Ephraim Chilo was NBC Sport. Let's now look at the headlines as we end the news. Concola Copper Mines says three out of the 300 people that were affected by sulfur dioxide emissions in Chingola last week are still admitted to hospital. The Zambia Police Service has launched a special operation aimed at curbing escalating criminal activities in Kitwe. Energy Minister Matthew Nkua says power imports from ESCOM of South Africa will start before the end of the week. And Zambia national football team interim coach Agri Chiangi says the inclusion of Patson Daka and Enoch Mwepu will strengthen the team. Well, that's the end of the news. I'll be back again for more news at 22 hours on this same channel. Thank you so much for your time. Let's remember that we are and will always be one Zambia, one nation. We'll see you at 22. Thank <laughs> you.